Alright, welcome everyone and on YouTube on the official Rise of Kingdoms channel a new video has just been released. Are we going to check it out together? There is some new information about the new KVK coming up. Uh, they're showing also the new two commanders and some VIP 18 information. Let's straight jump into it. Let's start the video. First of all, nice animations. I think they spent some uh, chocolate on this one. Hi, governors. Welcome back to another update video. My name is Leo. And I'm Asia. And today we'll be covering some new and exciting all right. content from this update. March of the Ages. First, we are having two brand new infantry legendary commanders. So the first one is Top Jungjun. His talent trees are very similar to Alex, but is it really the same as Alex? Yeah, you tell me. I don't know. You tell me. You can get this new A nice animation. Fortune event. The second commander is the oh, sorry about that. This commander will be available in the wheel event, which is always a more easy I want to get. Normally, the better commanders in the MGE, so he's harder to uh, get. His conquering and defense talents. He is very unique and new to Rise of Kingdoms. Which commander do you think would be a good pairing to him? Yeah, you tell me. We got to see. This is Pakal. You can get Pakal. this commander in the Mightiest Governor event. MGE. He should be better of those two. See what lies beyond the stars. Nice animation, and he has a nice voiceover. I want to hear everything he's saying. VIP 18 is finally here. And there we go. Alright, so we have. Oh, let me open my sheet here. I already closed it. Whatever. Troop capacity 5% increased. So it's 15% in total for VIP 18. We have uh, reduced healing resource cost. And we have March speed uh, 5% additional. So everything has been increased by 5%. Those three things. VIP 18 gives you extra 10% on March speed, 15% on troop capacity. Sorry, so VIP 17 means 5% March speed. And if you get 18, VIP 18, you have 10% in total. It's an increase of 5%. And 15% reduction of healing resource consumption. Hey, I don't know. Healing resource consumption. Does it mean also speed ups? Not only resources, not 100% sure on this. Uh, if you know that, leave me a comment in the comment uh, section down below, please. The most exciting part of the update is the new KVK, the March of the Ages. With teleportation oh, yeah. restricted, governors are no longer able to move freely in the map. So how would you move around? Yeah, finally, right? Finally, we are not allowed to move uh, freely anymore in KVK. I was waiting for this so long. The map. Join rallies and reinforce flags? Well, with the new building management future, you can... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go back. It's too much. Restricted. Governors are no longer able to move freely in the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would you move around the map? Join rallies and reinforce flags? Um, first of all, let's take a look on this map. It's huge. This is just a small portion of the map we are watching. Look at all those tiles. Oh, is this like a one year KVK map? <laughs> I don't know, man. Reinforce flags? Well. Okay. Building okay, this is interesting. Building management. So you have. Let me. Let's just hear what she's saying. But uh, let me come back to this picture. Management future. You can now plan your city base, apply your own strategies, and reach the victory step by step. Ancient pagodas are evenly scattered on the map. Governors can attack and occupy an ancient pagoda hmm. adjacent to coalition territory, and then build a foundation stone within a certain radius of the pagoda. Each pagoda has a special buff. Cities within range of a pagoda will receive a special boost. So make sure your structure game is planned wisely. Another new structure that can be built by governors is a foundation stone. Foundation stone can only be built near ancient pagoda. Okay, we stopped at 230. Let me go back here to this window. I hope I find the correct position. Should be here. One more. And With the new building there we go. So building management, as far as I could hear, we can build one foundation stone only. So you can only build one at a time uh, while you have forward camps and you can build more also by progressing in the Chronicles. 
Complete uh, pushing forward in the Lost Kingdom Chronicles to unlock. Okay, the forward camps are very interesting and it's going to be involving a lot of strategy stuff. Now those structures, you can put them on your territory and they're giving you a bonus if you build around them. Now also the foundation stone is like a building, a structure you have to place in order being able to teleport over there. You have to use the foundation stone. Um, these forward camps are very interesting. Now you can send reinforcements to those uh, forward camps. They are not using up um, a march slot, as far as I could understand here. Like you have five marches maximum you can send out. Uh, as far as I understand here, they are not using up such a slot. So you can just uh, reinforce as long as you have troops. I'm not sure uh, how this is going to work out, but it's going to be very interesting and strategies involving and changing by a lot because it's a total different mode, right? Management future, you can now plan your city base. Okay, we already have seen this. Let me forward. Station stone within a certain radius of the pagoda. So yeah, pagodas are just all over the map. Uh, they have different buffs. And yeah, I, I mean, you have to check the buffs before you know which way you want to go, I guess. Each pagoda has a special buff. Cities within range of a pagoda will receive a special boost. So make sure your structure game is planned wisely. Another new structure is... And I think uh, the next KVK will be very territory based. You have to always stay near your territory, right? Uh, to get the buffs. I mean, you can fight um, out of this uh, area where you don't have these buffs available, but I think the trade will be less effective. So I think you're always moving with the territory as far as you can. Can be built by governors is a foundation stone. Foundation stone can only be built near ancient pagodas controlled by your own coalition and allow. Let me try to read this uh, small little thing here. Maybe this is information we don't get told here. Tell what governors must build the foundation stone. Tell okay, then we know the move in the city is located once completed. Okay. And allow you to tell Imprison ineffective. Teleporting will not be restricted by the king skill in prison on this map. Ah, oh. no cities being zeroed by the imprison skill? Question mark. City to its location once building is completed. Foundation stone can. These are nice numbers. You can see this is work in progress. Not be attacked unless they are disconnected from coalition territory. For example, you can build a foundation stone and reserve a needed spot and teleport later, but you may only use one foundation stone at a time. The next structure plays a large strategic role on the March of the Ages map. It is the forward camp, which can be built only in coalition territory. Okay, on the coalition territory. They are critically important structures for healing troops and supplying reinforcements. Forward so, garrison troops. Governors can dispatch commanders and their troops to garrison in the forward camp for frontline front front battles. Camps heal slightly wounded you. Build time. This was four hours, something. It takes four hours to build and upgrade a forward camp. Okay, so it looks like this is fixed. Units directly and will send governors, reserves. Governors have the option to dispatching their units as a reserve without commanders. Oh, so there we go. To a forward camp to re reinforce garrison troops. Dispatching reserve does not cost marching orders. Uh, that was uh, what I'm talking about. So, if you send, some, if you send your um, reinforcements, first of all, it's not using up a slot. Second, you don't have to use up your commanders. Uh, it's a new mechanic. We have to check how exactly this is going to work. I mean, if I'm right, if you have a lot of troops in the city, like you are a big whale, can you unlimited uh, reinforce those structures? I mean, this would be a huge benefit, right? Like, imagine a guy with like 14 or 15 million <clears throat> uh, troops in the city. Wounded units straight away. In future forward camps can heal slightly wounded units and will send heavily wounded units straight away to the city hospital. Interesting. To the hospitals. Doesn't a normal fight already is doing this? With different mechanics and a bigger map, the March of the Ages allows governors to discover new strategies and tactics. Ancient pagodas, forward camps, radio supply, derelict passes are here to give you a whole new experience. So many stuff. Once your forward camp is built, you can send Rock 123. Okay, it's a cool name. Commanders and their troops to garrison in the forward camp. Governors can dispatch troops. Mm, let me just try. Maybe there's information we don't get told here. There was a little scroll down there. Marching orders. Marching orders can dispatch commanders and their troops to a forward camp. They accumulate over time and cannot be sped up. 
Okay, it's like you saving something in this structure in the forward camp. Over time, you accumulating and then you can apply a marching order. It's like you can send out troops from this uh, forward camp. Dispatch troops to garrison. Marching orders, okay. Forward camps at the cost of marching orders. So they looks like they have this icon uh, on the top. They accumulate over time and cannot be spent. Over time, reserve management, reserve dispatch, idle reserve units. So we see one garrison who is 230 in this case, auto reinforce. Oh, that's interesting. I think uh, it's going to automatically take troops out of your city to fill it up again. And reach level 3 forward camp to unlock, reach level 5. So you can also upgrade them. Also an option of reserve management without commanders is a reserve to reinforce garrison troops doesn't cause marching orders and cannot be attacked in transit placement of your foundation <laughs> stone and forward camp is very important so this zones you see there it's a greenish one and the yellow one as it has a supply supply radius supply radius which has a huge impact okay let's read the supply radius has a big impact on the amount of damage your troops can inflict Troop damage within the supply radius at the edge of the supply radius and outside the supply radius is 100%, 75% and 10% respectively. Troop damage, 100% within, I think 75% on the outer ring, like there's the second one, the yellowish, and then 10% out. Man, that is a huge difference. You always want to stay in there. On the amount of damage your troops can deal. The closer your troops are to the supply radius, do you like pass, the okay. more damage they deal. One of the new elements in this KVK are derelict passes, which cannot be attacked or traversed. Eight camps, by the way. So that's it for today's. That's not enough camps, if you ask me, for such a big map. They should like fifty. Video. What are 50? your first impressions on the update? Let us know in the comment section below. Every update is a good update. Uh, I'm just saying. I mean, new stuff in the game, uh, I'm all in. And make sure to subscribe for the most up-to-date Rise of Kingdoms official content. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Guys, uh, by the way, it's official content. I know uh, yeah, some of you guys also like to see unofficial uh, content, maybe even more, but this one is really official. Bye. All right, thanks, you both. Uh, that's it uh, from me. I just wanted to uh, watch the video with you. Uh, what do you think about the new update, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below and see you on the next one.